you Dirty Potters. How are you today? Okay, today is gonna be a non-educational video. I just want you to know that now. So for quite some time, I have been romanticizing two things in my head as far as this YouTube channel goes. Number one, I want all of my favorite YouTubers to have one of my pieces of work. One of my mugs, one of my bowls, something of that nature. The issue is that all of my favorite YouTubers have nothing to do with pottery whatsoever. They're all like destiny YouTubers, which means essentially I have to make like Destiny mugs, I, I have one, hold on. Which means I would have to make like Destiny type mugs or merchandise to some extent, and then I would have to somehow get them to like me enough for me to send this to them. And if they don't have a PO box, it's like a home address issue and it's, it, 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 it doesn't work that way. But the other thing that I romanticized before even getting this channel is that, and, and don't laugh, don't laugh. I really badly want YouTuber friends and I don't know why because I'm not a social person. I have like 15 people max that I like a lot in the world, but I feel like a lot of YouTubers that I watch, I romanticize as being cool people. And because of that, I want to be friends with them, even though I'm not social in the first place. I don't know if you notice at all, but I'm kind of like my own little thing. It's like me and maybe Lindsay, and then like, we're our own little thing, you know what I mean? But soon enough, and Sika is gonna be in Sacramento. You know, the place where I sleep. Look, this is all just to say that I wanna hang out with other potters and learn and get experience from them and make friends with them, make connections, but it's really difficult with the pandemic. But also I have a YouTube channel, so I'm going to abuse that. So I'm gonna start a new little series, possibly even a new little playlist, where I'm just gonna start doing mug trades with potters who will talk to me. <laughs> and I'm just gonna start making videos of me trying to expand my own creativeness or my own artistic skills while making mugs to trade off to them. Also, I, let, let's be real. I'm pretty much trading mug for mug, but now I'm gonna have a collection of all the cool social media potters, so suck it! Oh, I don't like it when he says suck it. Well, that's because you're sucking it wrong. And the first person we're gonna start off with is Ceramic Sabrina. Yes, she has her own YouTube channel. Yes, she has her own Instagram. I will link both of those things down below for you. She's actually cool. The way I judge people and their coolness is literally the vibes they give off when I talk to them and uh, she don't give off the bad vibes. And this is essentially how I'm gonna do it for the entirety of this playlist. I'm gonna start a brand new playlist on my YouTube channel called The Mug Trade, and I'm just gonna end up mug trading with a bunch of potters that I kinda wanna hang out with anyway. Look, okay, it's, I, I just wanna talk to these people. I like them, I want YouTube friends, and this is the only way I know how to do it because the only thing that is kind of valuable about me in totality is number one, I'm really good at this one specific skill that the gods gave me, and number two, my back blowout game is awesome. Or so I've been told by the uh, by the one by the one person that I um, by one, by by basically one person. But we're gonna do it different each and every time. So this way, I grow as a potter, we grow as a community, and we all grow together. Don't look at the back of my head, you perv. The other videos will not be this energetic unless you want that. I would also love some comments down below to tell me who you think I should also do videos and mug trades with. The only rule to that is you can't say yourself. I already see you. Take your little greasy paws off the keyboard. I promise, next video, I will not do this long explanation, and I also promise that I will not be this energetic. Um, somebody might have had cold brew, and when you're not supposed to drink as much, I drank, I drank a lot of cold, I drank a lot of cold brew. So in this video, we're starting off our mug trade with Ceramic Sabrina, and this is kind of her style, but I want to get away from that. I don't want to just copy her style and then end up like giving her back her own style. I could do that, but then I'd have to learn to draw within a week and then learn to copy her stuff. I don't want to do that. I want to give her something very personal while also trying to include some of her style within my own. So first, we're going to make the form. <laughs>
As a general rule, whenever I do these kind of things, I treat it kind of like a commission. That being said, I make multiples of the same thing or around the same thing so that I can pick the best version of whatever I'm about to give to my customer, whoever I'm trading with, or anything like that. But I want this commission to be a little bit different. I don't want to just make her a standard mug and then be like, oh, look, we did a trade. I want to experiment and embolden myself as an artist. So I had a little idea. I talked to Sabrina last night and she was telling me that she doesn't really like super big handles. She likes ones that you can fit like two or three fingers inside of like a normal mug. This in my brain transferred over to, oh Dante, I don't, I don't even use the handle, they suck. So I actually found a bunch of crystals inside my studio and I want to see if I can integrate some of these crystals into the handle itself while still making it usable. That means if I have to jam them where the thumb rest is, I can do that. That means if I have to jam them as part of the handle, I can do that as well. But because I want to do that, this means I also have to make about seven or eight handles so I can figure out where these would go ergonomically. So it'd be a comfortable fit in her hand. So we're going to pull about eight handles. Keep in mind that this is usually the way that I do my handles. I know that clay has a memory and if it starts to dry in a certain form, usually it likes to dry back into the form that it was previously. So I form my handles into this curve first, but I feel like it's much easier to form them from this when I decide to attach them to a mug. So I'm probably gonna kind of dissect these later on, chop them up a little bit, tie crystals and see where they work into the mug itself. We're not keeping these forms, but I think these mugs are just dry enough. So now it's time to trim them. Okay, now that we have all of these marked up with my maker's mark and trimmed, which by the way, was a little bit of a pull. Through this entire process, I've been thinking to myself, what can I do to these to make them a little bit more special for Sabrina? But to be honest, I don't want to overcomplicate the entire subject, so I'm trying to stay on track because I really wanted to trim the heck out of these and put a bunch of designs in them. But the other part of me was like, no, no, we already have crazy crystal ideas going on here, so let's, let's just stay on track. Don't do too much. Now here comes the difficult part because I only have about one, two, three, four, five, six crystals and I'm pretty sure these two belong together so I realistically only have about five crystals.
With this first one here, I put the arch a little bit too high to make it into a thumb rest. Nobody needs a thumb rest at the very top of the mug. It seems kind of dumb to put it like, you know what I mean? It's almost higher than the edge itself. So I have to figure out another way to represent this or I have to move this down, which I don't want to do because it's already attached. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to dissect this and somehow put the crystal somewhere in the middle of the actual handle itself. It's something I've been planning to do for quite some time anyway. So I'm going to try and do some of this. This is an old trick that I learned back in school is that you can essentially tie any item to something after it comes out of the glaze kiln. The only difference is that you have to make sure the item stays in place. So if you do this, right, you want to put it right here. And a lot of people will be like, no, you can't put that in the kiln. Yes, I realize you can't put it in the kiln. So what we're going to do is we're going to line it up really nice like this. And we have to account for shrinkage, right? But I don't have like a shrinkage ruler. I don't know the shrinkage of this clay. It's two different clay bodies, as you can probably tell. You probably noticed by now that a lot of this is marbleized clay body. This is a couple different clays. So even if I could calculate the shrinkage, I would have to calculate it per space. And I just don't want to. And I can't do that, to be honest with you. It's above my abilities. So an old trick that I learned back in my school days is to get the item, wiggle it in between the clay like this, and leave it in there and let it dry. Once it dries, it usually leaves about this much space. When it goes back inside of the bisque and the glaze kiln, it usually shrinks again. The key is to just leave a little bit more space in the item itself. It doesn't shrink that much. And we're gonna see how that works out. Hopefully, we can have a mug that looks just like this, like a little crystal in the middle, you know? But I do have to clean up these sides because it looks unprofessional. I left a little tiny bit of space for movement because I know it's going to shrink anyway. So we're just gonna let it dry like this and hopefully when I take it out, it doesn't crack. If it does, I have to spread it out a little bit more and let it have a little bit more space, which I think I'll do right now just because I don't trust it to be honest with you. Yep, we'll just leave it like that and that should be fine. Hopefully this works. For this one here, I think we're gonna do the thumb rest technique. I just wanna see what it looks like anyway. With this handle, I put it a little bit closer to the middle of the mug, as well as I made it a lower arch. So the other one was like a super high arch. It was way up here. It was higher up on the mug. This one here, we're putting a little bit lower and we're gonna put the thumb rest near that point there. This way, the center of gravity for the mug actually ties back on the hand instead of pushing forward, forcing her to use the arch going upwards. So this way, the arch is not super high. She can use that thumb rest. So let's see which one of these crystal, crystal, crystals. This one here, the one looks like Amethyst from Steven, Steven Universe. I also want to make sure it's not cutting her as she uses it, so I'm clearly not going to put the crystal like this with the super pointy edge pointing towards her. I want to use a flat edge, or at least an edge that looks like it stays inside your thumb right there. So let's do, maybe this is, maybe this is not the crystal. Maybe this is not the wound. Maybe it's, oh yeah, that's the one right here. That's, this is the one. Let's use this one. This one looks like it was made for a thumb rest. Let's make a little indent right here so that when it comes out, we can know. Like, hey, you were gonna use this for this purpose to the point where you made an indent that shrinks. And I'm gonna make a little more room just so that it can shrink properly. This one here, I think I'm just gonna put the crystal right here. She told me that she doesn't really care about mugs too much. She just needs to fit about two or three fit. I need, I need to stop doing that right now. So what I figured I could do is I could easily just take up space within the handle since she doesn't need a lot of space anyway. So let's see, let's just try and stick this one right here. The cool thing is I can use the jagged parts of this, but I'm sure this is gonna be an easy one because I mean, we just, we just wedge it in there, you know what I mean? I only have about three crystals left, and one of them is so small that I don't think I could use it for anything. And I only have one mug left, other than this one here, so technically two. So one of you gets this, and the other one gets this. So we either need to find a way to incorporate this into this, or this into this, somehow. I think this one's gonna go to this, because this one's a little bit more, like, curvy, and this one's more angular, and I kind of like that contrast. Plus, I've already put the handle on this one. There's like no, there's no way I can see this going into here safely with, you know what I mean? Like I, I would have had to plan that out 
from the get-go like just stick, just stick it in the clay body and be like oh look it's this uh, it's art now can't just make something up and call it a day okay i know i just said i can't just stick crystals on stuff and call it a day but like would that be working though? <laughs> Do it be bussin' though? I'm sorry, I've been on TikTok a lot. Does that work? Oh my God, I hate that. It's amazing. Oh wow, okay. I don't know if this will work, but I think that's the point of experimentation is to just be like, oh, let's throw it to the wind and see if it works. Plus I did already make a giant dent inside of the clay body with it. So it's not a well put together mug, but we're gonna keep it. I think that's the point of experimentation. Okay, look, I'm not gonna lie to you. I have no idea where to put this. And I think that this would have been better suited on something that was more straight or angular rather than something that was a bit curvy. Like, oh, cause in proportional size, this is just kind of like half the size of the mug and it looks a little bit strange. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this small one and do what I've been doing and just put it as a thumb rest at the very top. I'm sorry, I'm sorry I'm not as creative as you thought I was, but this is my first go at just jamming crystals and stuff other than maybe like five years ago when I did it correctly. And now I'm doing it incorrectly on purpose just as an experiment. So we're just we're just gonna, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I failed you. So let's take a look at all the ones we have so far as a gift or a mug trade for Ceramic Sabrina. All right, we have these four in the front, which all have the crystals in them. We have these four in the back, which don't. These ones are gonna be interesting, but I'm probably gonna save some of these for raw work, as they have some interesting handles on them. Some fat boys, some long johns. I call my handles weird names, deal with it in the comments below. This episode's getting a little bit long, so we have to split it into two different parts. This first part was the majority of it. It's the making process, while the second part is gonna be the glaze and how I reattach the crystals to where they need to be. So thank you for watching part one. This is getting a little bit long. It's probably somewhere around 15 minutes by now. Uh, make sure to click all the YouTube buttons that my YouTube overlords like, otherwise I'll be homeless. <laughs> Dirty Potters. My name is Sabrina and I go by Ceramic Sabrina here on YouTube and on Instagram where I post my ceramic artwork. I make a lot of mugs like this and I do a lot of tattoo style illustration like that and I also have a website CeramicSabrina.com that you can check out if you want to see more of my work and you can also check out the video that I posted on my YouTube channel when you're done watching this one. So I'll see you over there.